Welcome to another episode of Insight Update, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to talk about Russia's invasion into Ukraine. My question is why we are in this senseless war to start with. Why do we still allow this to happen? And why are we putting ourselves once again at the brink of another world war? It's not just about our future generations are at stake here. We are talking about the threat of a nuclear war, an annihilation and the end of human civilization. Clearly, we have not learned enough to prevent this war from happening. The question is, what did we miss? In order to find the answer, let's take a look at how Hitler started the Second World War in Europe. Hitler's first post-First World War assignment was to lead an information department designed to infiltrate the civil society and political parties to sway the public opinion. He did the job remarkably well with the support of the army. He even didn't have to practice too hard in front of mirrors to have the style of giving speech that we all have seen too many times. His first initiative was to change the public's opinion towards the Jews with his carefully designed lies. He claimed the purpose of religion, socialism and democracy among the Jewish community is only in the service of making money. He defined the existence of Jews in Germany as a disease that needed to be resolved by elimination. He achieved this by confining his message into a few words and keep repeating them. His propaganda machine, however, was not satisfied with the result yet. Ignoring the unprecedented devastation to both Allies and Germany after the First World War. He emotionally and insidiously portrayed Germany as an innocent victim of evil and blamed ally side for the hardship Germany was experiencing. He also ignored the context that the collapse of German-Austrian Empire was ignited by the Bolshevik Revolution of 1917 that led to civil wars across Europe. That propaganda very much led the German public on board to eventually starting the Second World War and fighting alongside the Nazi. Let's also look at the Korean War. In November 1950 on the Korea Peninsula, victory of the Korean War for Allies seemed certain. General MacArthur declared the end of war by Christmas. However, that quickly changed when the Chinese joined covertly to save their communist allies. Eventually, after almost three more years of grueling fights with heavy losses on both sides, the war ended with an armistice reached between North Korean and China on one side and the United Nations led by the United States on the other. The question is why China decided to join and how they convinced the public to start another war that is not even in the Chinese territory. Mao Zedong and the fresh communist regime had been fully briefed of the North Korea's invasion plan when Kim Il-sung and Mao met in May 1950. Most historians believe China wanted to establish a buffer zone in the Koreas between them and the United States. Some also believe Mao wanted the war to eliminate millions of the surrendered soldiers from the other side during the civil war that was still ongoing in some parts of the country in 1950. Mao could never trust them as pure radical communists. But he needed to find a way to sell the war to the party and public. It was inconceivable to fight against the mighty United States even for many of his high-ranking battle-hardened military leaders. The obvious and logic target was always to liberate Taiwan to achieve unification. Other than that Chinese people had little appetite for one more after decades of wars in China. Mao Zedong's propaganda machine was soon firing on all cylinders. Simple slogans, songs and dances and more importantly lies were deployed to satiate the public with the lie that the motherland is under threat while ignoring the fact that the North started the invasion and China was never under the threat of being invaded. That propaganda also worked inside the party well to categorize the war as glorious and necessary. Most Chinese nowadays still don't know much truth after almost 70 years since the war was stopped. They don't know they were fighting the United Nations in the Korea Peninsula. China's propaganda machine worked marvelously. And this was not even their first success. Prior to the Korean War, during China's fight against the Japanese invasion, Mao infamously established the doctrine that with every one effort in fighting, they shall make ten times as much effort for propaganda. He scolded his generals for exposing the strength of communist army when they ambushed a Japanese convoy in the Battle of Pingxinguan on September 25, 1937. 
It turned out to be the only battle they fought at the division level during the Japanese occupation of China for over eight years, from 1937 to 1945. Under the disguise of their instigating slogans and lies with barely any effort in fighting the war, they grew stronger every day in preparation for the epoch fight against the Kuomintang army who were preoccupied fighting the Japanese with unprecedented casualties. As recent as a few days ago, Chinese government spokesperson made another accusation to blame the US for the origin of the COVID-19 virus. This was just another one of their propagandas filled with inaccurate accusations that were dismissed as baseless by most countries. It did muddy the water enough to provide some much-needed delusion for China to deploy its predatory mask and medical supply diplomacy. That worked especially well for some vulnerable countries unfortunately. They felt obligated to align with China in the international stage by either blocking the access to truth or used by China to spread more false information. How did Russia's propagandas and misinformation against Ukraine work? Their first false accusation, Ukraine incited tensions and repressed Russian speakers in Ukraine. This was quickly dismissed by the Western countries as Russia's attempt to justify their invasion. It was reported in 2016 that Ukraine's Security Service Bureau uncovered some telephone conversation intercepts between the Russian presidential advisor and the State Duma in 2014 for the funding of the pro-Russian activists in eastern Ukraine. Second false accusation. Putin questioned the legitimacy of the Ukrainian state and claimed Ukraine never had a tradition of genuine statehood. If we can look at it from the perspective of international laws, there are two accepted theories of statehood creation, constitutive and declarative. The constitutive theory of statehood was developed in the 19th century. It stipulates a state as a person of international law, if, and only if it is recognized as sovereign by at least one other state. Ukraine has official diplomatic relations with more than 180 countries across the globe. It is undisputable Ukraine is a sovereign state according to the constitutive theory. The more widely accepted declarative theory stipulates sovereign states shall have a permanent population, defined territory, one government and the capacity to enter into relations with other sovereign states. It shall also be recognized by some big powers. Ukraine, with a population of roughly 40 million, governs an area that is one of the largest in Europe. The current government is led by the democratically elected President Volodymyr Zelensky. All big powers including the United States, all NATO members and countries in Africa, Asia and Oceania have official ties with Ukraine. Clearly Ukraine satisfies all the conditions for being a sovereign country by the declarative theory as well. No mistake, Ukraine is an independent country. Third false accusation, Putin accused Ukrainian society and government of being dominated by neo-Nazism. This can be said of any democratic countries where people are free to organize and express their opinions without the fear of persecutions. No one denies the existence of some far-right groups and ideologies in Ukraine but it's baseless to claim the government's support of it. As hard to believe as they sound, unfortunately these lies have been planted into the minds of Russian people after decades of propaganda and brainwashing. We have all seen the protests the war in Russian cities which definitely deserve high marks. On the other hand, President Putin still enjoys overwhelming support among the Russian people. To him, mission is already accomplished as no one can challenge his position and power and he shall govern Russia with his iron fist forever. From these significant histories shaping wars and the pandemic we see the works of powerful state-sponsored propaganda machine that instigated hate, distorted facts, and manufactured and spread lies. They promote largely self-serving, narrow-minded, an inaccurate representation of the events or observations in the society in the past or at present. The consequences are grave to say the least. Lies led to wars. If you think it can't get any worse when the deadliest ever virus started spreading from China to the rest of the world or when Russia blatantly started an unprovoked war against its weaker neighboring Ukraine, I recommend you think again. China and Russia have long been in war with us. In fact, their propaganda, misinformation and lies never stopped. They have always been preparing for the next big war. 
We either underestimated the magnitude of the consequences of propagandas or we did not learn the lessons at all. Yet this is the very lesson we can't afford to miss. We have been treating Putin as a comrade for too long when he clearly was not one of us. And by treating China as a strategic partner when it's nothing but a friend. We are paying for it now in Ukraine. Winston Churchill once said, those that fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. We must stop the propaganda machine. We must win the information war so we don't pay even more dearly in the future. No mistake it's a hard battle but we must let the truth be heard. Unfortunately, we are not safe before the enemies are defeated and democratized. The question is, how do we get there? What can we do to avoid the next war which could very well be the last and our Armageddon if this one does not escalate into one? We'll talk about this in the next episode. We hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit the like and subscribe button if you have. Let us know what you think by leaving your comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Please also consider becoming a patron to help us make more videos like this. Thank you.